All right, we're looking at the remainder theorem here, uh, what it is and how you can use it. We're going to apply it in uh, situations when you have polynomials, a polynomial divided by a binomial here, such as that one. Let's say I was interested in finding the remainder for that division statement. How can I find the remainder for this? Without knowing anything about the remainder theorem, what you would do right now is probably divide the thing, whether you use long division or synthetic division. I'll quickly use synthetic division here. Uh, set it up with my coefficients here. One, three, four, five. Bring that one down. Multiply it back. Subtract. Multiply it back. Subtract. Multiply it back one more time there. One, three, four, zero. Subtract to get 1345. That's my remainder. All right, now we're going to do something else here. And uh, what we're going to do is instead of doing this division here, we are going to substitute in the root of that divisor. We're going to substitute the x value in that would make this factor zero, or this, this binomial here zero. So we're going to substitute in 10 here. Substitute in x equals 10. If I do that, first I'll write this out so we know what we're doing here. Plus 4x plus 5. So if we substitute this in here, we have 10 to the third plus 3 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10 plus 5. We have 1,300 plus 40 plus 5. Or in other words, you're going to see that that's going to work out to 1,345. Now, I'm sure you've already recognized that that happens to be the same number as that. All right, and this is what the remainder theorem says. Exactly this here, that if you're looking for the remainder when you are dividing a polynomial, you can obviously divide and find that remainder, or you can use sort of a shortcut here. You can substitute in the root of the divisor, of the thing you're dividing by, and you'll get the remainder. This is just one example, but it's going to work every single time. So let's put it in some more general terms here. Let me go down here. All right, the remainder theorem, remainder theorem, says that when you have some polynomial, if it's called p of x, if you're dividing by some kind of binomial here, x minus a, then you can get the remainder when you substitute a into the polynomial. If you had x squared plus, oops, plus 3x minus 5, if you wanted to divide that by x plus 2, you can do the, the division the long way, or what you can do is you can just substitute in the root of this. In other words, you can sub in x equals negative 2 into that polynomial, and you'll get the remainder. All right, so this is the, the words written below here. What I said earlier is the way that you can think about this is uh, in sort of everyday languages. You can substitute in the root of the divisor, and you get the remainder. Now you might wonder why why you care about the remainder instead of caring about the quotient, right? We go back to this up here, the question that we did here. Often what we care more about is the, the quotient when you divide instead of the remainder. What, are, what we're going to get into in the, in the future here is looking at the remainder and using that to make some decisions about whether things are factors or not. But that's getting ahead of myself here a little bit. So we'll just use this remainder theorem here a little bit and uh, see what we can do with it. Now, maybe before we do, let's quickly look at why this, why this works. This is just this division check statement that you've seen before, right? Polynomial, or the, the dividend you're starting with, is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Remember, with, with numbers, say if you divided 80, let's do it over here. If you divided 80 divided by 12, you would get 6 and a remainder of 8 left over. All right, so what this is saying is 80 is equal to 12 times 6 plus 8. All right, that's what that statement is saying. Works for polynomials for anything. Okay, hopefully you're familiar with that. 
So this is just, you know, if it's written out here, if we're dividing by x minus a, if we sub in a into the polynomial here, and we sub a in on this side, right, I'm going to get something that looks like this. P of a equals, if I sub in a there, a minus a times the quotient plus the remainder. It doesn't even matter what the quotient is once I've done that, because this is equal to zero. Zero times the quotient plus the remainder. Zero. This side's just the remainder. P of a is the remainder. That value you get when you substitute in the, the root of the divisor is the remainder. Okay, important concept. Let's use it to quickly find the remainder for that division. Now, of course, you could do this using long division or synthetic division. And putting this over here, if you were going to do that, you'd have to put in all the coefficients here. You'd have to put in 1x to the 5th, negative 1x to the 4th, 0x to the 3rd, 0x squared, 0x, and 7. That's a lot of coefficients there. And you could work through that all the way over here and get the remainder. But the remainder theorem says what you can do is just sub in x equals the root of that divisor, negative 2, into the polynomial. There's only three terms you have to sub it into, and you might even know your powers of 2 well enough. Negative 2 to the 5th minus negative 2 to the 4th plus 7. This is negative 32. This is minus 16 plus 7. If I do that, that is going to give me negative 41. That's that remainder. Now maybe just as a quick check here, let's do it the long way, even though we're pretty confident that's the remainder. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 6, 6, 12, negative 12, negative 24. Didn't leave much space here. 24 in there, 48. Subtract that, negative 41. That's a good way to check. Oftentimes this is a lot quicker. And I think for the average person, you're way more prone to make mistakes in this with the signs than you are substituting in some numbers there. All right. Lastly here, let's do a little bit more difficult uh, problem where you're kind of working backwards here. You're missing some coefficients in, uh, in the original polynomial here, but you're given the remainders for two different divisions. Now, how can we find those two those two missing coefficients? Well, using the remainder theorem, you can write um, you can write some equations. You can actually write two equations, one for each of these, and then if you have two equations and you have two unknowns, you can solve them together as a system. So I'm going to write the first one here. I'm, going to, I'm just going to write the polynomial down here first, plus bx squared, plus cx minus 10. We're going to write one for this and one for this. If I write that first one here, negative 2, if I sub in for this, if I sub in x equals, oops, equals negative 2, remainder equals 12. If I sub in for this one, x equals 1, remainder equals negative 12. Those are my two equations I'm going to write. So I'm going to sub in negative 2 here, b times negative 2 squared, plus c times negative 2, minus 10, and that should give me 12. There's one equation, even though it's really complicated looking. It's an equation. It's got two variables in it. That by itself, if there's only one variable, I could solve that the way it is. There's two variables, so I'm going to need a second equation with those same variables. Let me simplify this a little bit first. This is negative 8 plus b times 4 minus 2c here and we can while we're thinking about it write this as plus 4b and we have our equation there so I'm gonna leave these where they are I'm gonna move those other terms over to the other side that one and that one 12 plus 10 plus 8 so I've got 4b minus 2c equals what is that 30 or I can make that a little bit simpler if I want to because these are all even 
coefficients here, those numbers involved. So I'm actually going to make it into divide everything by 2 and get that. So there's one equation with the two variables in it. Now I can do the same thing for my other division up there. I don't want to lose my coefficients here. Again, we have x cubed plus bx squared. Just writing it again so I can not lose track of what I'm doing. Now, when I sub in x equals 1, the root of that divisor, that should give me negative 12, that remainder. All right, so I'm going to do that right now. 1's actually really easy to sub in. 1 cubed plus b times 1 squared plus c times 1 minus 10. And we said that should equal negative 12. This one's pretty quick and easy here to do, right? 1 plus b plus c minus 10 equals negative 12. If you move it all over to one side, you're going to find that you get negative 12 plus 10 minus 1. Let's get that all straightened out. b plus c equals negative 3. So we have two equations now. So we're going to take this one up here. And we'll put it down here, put our two equations together. If we take those two equations and we solve them together as a system, that's going to give us our values. Now you can do a few different things here. Let's make some more space. There we go. Uh, we, can, we can do a few things with that. We can solve that system using either elimination or substitution. Substitution is when you isolate one of the variables in one of the equations and substitute it into the other. This one, though, is probably quicker and easier to do by elimination because look at this. This says plus c in one equation, minus c in the other equation. If you just added those, you'd find that you'd get 3b, the c's would cancel out, and you'd get 12. Or in other words, you'd get b is 4. So you already know one of the values of of uh, one of the missing coefficients. Once you get one of them, then you can substitute it back. I'm going to substitute it into that first one, b plus c equals negative 3. I'm going to substitute in that 4 for b, 4 plus c equals negative 3, c equals negative 7. So there's our two values. You could write the polynomial out with those missing values, but we found them there. All right, so that's using algebra to, f to find them and using that remainder theorem. All right. That's a pretty involved problem that we that we solved there, but the key to being able to solve it is using that remainder theorem. All right, knowing that when you substitute in the root of the divisor, it gives you the remainder. All right, that is it. Let's scroll back to this before we finish. That's it. Remainder theorem. All right.